morning again, everybody. <clears throat> when I met with our church wardens at one of our periodic meetings, we thought that it was a good idea to hear from each of our different committees in the church, which do so much for the life of our church, and perhaps we're not all aware of what they do, um, or perhaps even aware that they all exist. So every now and again, when we have the opportunity, we thought we'd ask somebody to speak a little bit about each of the committees so more people in the church would know. Now, there are a lot of people from our church who aren't here today, so um, here's a shout out to all of you watching at home or on your mobile phones as well. We're, we're, we're recording this so that um, George's words can be, can be spread further abroad. But I think that a lot of people here don't require um, any introduction to George, who's been um, chairman of our church estates committee for, is it, is it 20 years? Just 24. 24 years, so he, he knows Rob, he speaks, so I'll, I'll hand over to him now. Thank you. Well, as you've just heard, I've been asked to tell you what the estates committee does. Why is involved in spending such, such large sums of money on behalf of the church? and how in many ways it saved the church from spending money, and how it achieved its ongoing function. I'm sure you all know the general scope of the work undertaken by the Safe Committee, which is the care and maintenance of church buildings and the grounds. However, you may not be aware of the amount of and the detailed work that is included in this brief. At present, there is a very small number of hands-on members on the committee, with the vicar, the church wardens, and treasurer as ex officio members. Do we have any of the committee members here at the moment? If they stand up. Let's see who you are, please. Will the people on the committee? One, two, three, four. Oh, the one. The rest of I do in bed or a long ago. Anyway, um, Although we do call upon other members of the congregation with known skills and tools when required, and they will know who they are, of course. Briefly, our terms of reference are these. is to provide expertise on aspects of maintenance and repair of new works, where possible to organise and carry out such works. We have to determine what needs to be done to maintain and where agreed by the PCC to improve the fabric, the fittings, furnishings of the church, the church hall and the churchyards. Then to carry out from our own resources of manpower and yes, woman power as well, let's not forget that you're the Archbishop, <laughs> uh, and other volunteers as much of this work as possible. Or to organise and supervise the rest of the work which has to be contracted out. Some members have particular areas of responsibility and can call upon other members of the committee or congregation to assist where additional or more extra assistance is required. We are also responsible for liaising with the church architect, the perusal of his proposals, notification of contracted invoices, provision of technical detail for faculty applications, being involved with insurance claims, and make a recommendation to the PCC about any of these matters. Prior to involving architects or contractors, we invariably carry out a measured feasibility study with drawings in order to save costs. We meet formally five times each year to discuss the works required, in progress or completed, but on many more occasions to carry out these works. I believe the average age of our committee is in excess of three score years and ten, with many of us being much older, and I mean much older. And we could certainly do with an injection of younger blood. So if there are any young bloods around who would like to join the committee, or even older ones for that matter, they'd be very welcome on the to, to join the committee. And we do really need people on the committee, extra, more people. If you have DIY skills or any other skills, so much the better, but quite often it's pairs of willing hands which are required. It has been said that if people do not do things, things do not get done. Well, things do get done by the committee members, 
to mention but a few of the jobs recently undertaken, many of which you may not be aware. A few years ago, for instance, a new access hatch for the tile roof was made to replace the existing dilapidated cover. It was too large and heavy to pass through the trap doors in the tile structure, and so was lifted externally on ropes some 70 feet by the committee members and then fitted in situ with the necessary fixings. Display cases for books and remembrance sets were being made and placed in the church. Right there, for instance, and there's another one somewhere, I believe. Can't see at the moment. The West Porch door um, has been, the glazing for the West Porch door has been um, replaced to enable viewing into the church. You may recall at one time it was sort of stained glass windows there. Well, they were taken up so people could see in and see what was going on. We do periodic, periodical painting of the large external door hinges and railings, etc. The same with oiling of all external doors. We paint the Victorian lamp standards. We rub down the painting and of the, what's called the fenestra, which in fact is the decorative um, ironwork you can see out some of the windows. Uh, we recently carried out redecoration, well I say recently, a couple of years ago now, redecoration and refurbishment of the parish room, the kitchen, the toilet, with cupboards, draining units, wash basin and other equipment. And we've done a complete refurbishment of the parish office, admittedly in this time that was contracted assisted, but we did have to do a lot of the work ourselves, like moving all the stuff out, painting it, etc. We've also replaced and painted the dilapidated fence and the gate in front of the churchyard sheds. We do periodic cleaning of the gutters and around the church and, and the hall. And also, from time to time, we assist in prodding the diocese when necessary for essential work for the vicarage in the grounds. There are many other routine but nonetheless essential tasks regularly undertaken by the committee members, such as keeping a check on the boilers, the heating and the lighting, setting on and off time for the heating, and the cleaning of the hall and the church. And although grass cutting is contracted out, clearing and keeping the churchyard tidy is another task undertaken by a committee member. Clearing block, block, grain, <laughs> clearing block grain gullies is one of the less pleasant jobs. And this church, in this church it requires at least two people and the very large steps to change the light pole. You can see why. So one of the reasons we allow at least two of the bolt, two or three of the bolts to actually finish before we do anything to them at all because we don't want to be getting up all, all um, steps and through many years just to be just to replace one bolt. <coughs> There's also a considerable quantity of paperwork to prepare and to read, to comment on and particularly when we're involved with outside bodies such as the diocese, the architect, the insurers and the local authorities. This includes minutes of meetings, end of expenditure budgets, drawings and specifications where necessary, studying and writing reports and comments, recommendations on various matters. In addition to these essential but more routine tasks, here are some of the tasks which the committee have recently been involved in. Preparation and specification of seeking tenders for the church hall redecoration and the supervision of saying. In addition, repolishing the hall floor by one of the members of the committee. We made various feasibility studies for the new toilets, both external and internal, and had discussions with the architect, the diocesan advisory committee for the proposed internal design which you will be delighted, delighted to hear, and perhaps in due course even relieved to know, has recently been passed by the DAC, and we can at last proceed to a faculty application. Also, a feasibility study from drawings for the proposed new parking area in the old churchyard included discussions with and approval of the diocesan, the DAC, <laughs> and the Royal Grave Commission. And in that connection, I'd just like to read you something which was passed to me earlier today <laughs> in connection with notices for churchyard parking. This appears to be from an American magazine 
and it says, church parking only, visitors will be baptised. <laughs> it doesn't say with what. We also provide assistance and drawings in connection with the new church I noticed board and point. That's fun, I'm sorry. Uh, recently, or rather, since the beginning of the year, we've been various teams have been appointed to carry out what is called topple testing of all the monuments in the churchyard um, for health and safety purposes. And we had um, estimates from the from the contractor who did the work for the local authority. And we reckon that by the time they had tested all of our memorials and possibly we had uh, had, to, had had laid down perhaps five percent of these, it would have cost us three thousand pounds. Well we're doing this work ourselves. We've done rather more than half of it so far and we hope to get the remainder completed by the end of the year. Um, we we have trouble with the you may not know this, but we had some we found there were some cracks in the um, cast iron frames of the um, uh, that support the bells in the tower. And we've inspected those and we've placed temporary propping underneath the cracks to make sure no problem has occurred. They're not ex don't, don't don't get away because the the damaged part of the frame is not supporting the bells. They're not going to come tumbling down. But we, we put some props there just to make sure that the, at least the fractured part would fall out and cause any problems. We've also removed some like something like 30 old lavender plants from the Garden Remembrance. We've placed timber edging around the beds. We've moved grass and weeds and they've all been replaced with new lavender plants. So as you can see, there's a lot of work going on, a lot to be done. And we really do need additional members of volunteers for this work on the committee. So whatever your skills, DIY garden, if any, what's the main thing is a willingness to, uh, it, willingness is, is the prerequisite of this rather than having any particular skills. Hands are what we need rather than skills so much. And finally, oops, I haven't gone on too long, I'm very pleased to tell you that following the recent Quinquendon inspection by the architect, he did make comments in his report that I believe reflect well on the members of the committee, present and past, and for which I am very grateful for their combined efforts, saying among other, among other remarks that the parish is to be congratulated on the way it looks after this church, and that the church continues to be well looked after and maintained, and the very few defects needing attention are witness to this. And if you're still awake after all that, I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have about this. Anyway, thank you very much for your kind attention. Yes. Yeah, I, I've got a question, George, that uh, I might know the answer, but other people might be interested. How long have you been chair of the Estates Committee? Um, I think 24 years. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Well, thank you, George. Uh, much appreciated both for kicking off this series of talks about different committees, but also for all that you do in, in leading the committee. I think I can't really add anything more to what the architect said. I mean, we, the architect's job really is to find fault in the pit, but he couldn't find many. Uh, not too many. And, um, uh, abs uh, absolutely right. So it's, uh, it's a, as you said, a testimony to all the members of the committee and, and your and your chairmanship. Um, the church is, is hugely grateful for all that the estates committee do, and we hope that um, new members will. We're, we're will to, we, we really need new members. We're, we're very short actually hands on members. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Thank you.